So now that we've graphed sine and cosine, we're going to look at graphing cosecant and secant. Now, when we're graphing cosecant and secant, we're using our sine and cosine graphs to get to the cosecant and secant graphs. Okay? So here is our parent function for cosecant, but it's really just the green parabola looking parts. Right? So notice here is our sine wave, right? and we're using that to help us get to it. So notice we have these asymptotes. <clears throat> these asymptotes happen at where the midline is for the sine, where the sine hits the midline graph. And so that's how we're going to go about graphing it. Um, and you find those asymptotes and then you create parabola looking things. They're not exact parabolas because they're bounded by these asymptotes though. Um, so here we first have to factor out our B value. So we have negative two cosecant of three X. And then if we're doing negative three pi halves divided by three, remember we're going to flip and multiply. So this is three over one, so we times by one third. So my threes cancel, so that gives me negative pi halves. So minus pi halves minus one. So the midline is at negative one, because that's our d value that's added or subtracted outside the sine or cosine, or cosecant and secant. Um, and then our amplitude is the thing that's multiplied in front of the trig function, so in this case cosecant. So we go from the midline up to, from the midline down to, then, I find the period, so the period is 2 pi divided by b. b is the thing that's multiplied by your variable inside the trig function, so in this case, uh, 3. So our period is 2 pi thirds. We go the opposite direction horizontally inside the parentheses, so our starting point is at pi halves. So the way that we find our end point is... Well, that, did not say that end point is that we do our start which is at pi halves plus our period which is two pi thirds um, again you're welcome to use your calculator so you can do one half plus two thirds let's make sure i remembered right yes remember you're taking the pies out so you get seven pi six so our ending point is at seven pi six so I'm fine as far as my tick marks on the graph. I don't need to rescale anything. So we're starting at pi halves, which is here, and then 7 pi 6. So this one is uh, written in uh, terms of sixes, six tick marks per pi. So 7 pi 6 will just be 1 sixth after. So we're going to end here. Again, we visually cut in half that distance, and then the first half and half and the second half and half. Cosecant's the reciprocal of sine. Okay. It's a negative sine, so that means we're going to go middle, bottom, middle, top, middle. I like to, when I'm doing my secant and cosecant graphs, I like to do my sine or cosine as a dotted line. <clears throat> so then I know it's not part of the graph. So now this is the new part. So here we create our asymptotes where the sine graph hits the midline. So at these three points, and they're vertical asymptotes. So we've got this is a vertical asymptote, this is a vertical asymptote, and this is a vertical asymptote. Okay. And then we create parabola looking like things. So here from our max, like this, and then here from our min, opening down like this. And then that's our graph. Okay. So if we try this one, <clears throat> we again have the B value is embedded inside this, so we have to factor that out. So we're going to have 1 half cosecant, 1 half x minus. So if we take pi fourths divided by 1 half, that means we're going to flip and multiply. So that gives us pi halves, so minus pi halves. You can keep the negative here. I already had it there, so whatever way you want to do it is fine. Um, I should do my double sets parentheses and then plus a half. Okay. So lots of halves in here. So our midline is at a half. The amplitude is a half, so up a half and down a half from there. So nice and short, uh, my graph is going to be. Then the period is 2 pi divided by b, which is 1 half. So I'm going to flip and multiply, so that gives us 4 pi. 
Oh, sorry, I didn't show the flip and multiply. So that gives us four pi for the period. We start the opposite direction inside the parentheses, so we're going right by pi halves. So we start at pi halves, so the end is going to be the start plus the period. So the start's pi halves, the period is 4 pi. So a half plus 4 gives us 4 and a half pi, which is the same thing as 2 times 4, which is 8 plus 1, which is 9 pi halves. So I look at my graph. We're only going to 2 pi. I need 4 and a half. So I'm going to rescale. So um, I'm going to do every 2 is a pi. You have some leeway here as to what you're doing for your tick marks. Um, but I have no qualms if you rescale your um, graph. Okay. So my starting point is at pi halves. So that'll be pi halves. And then I'm ending at 4 and a half, which is here. So I'm going to go halfway in between, and then halfway in between, halfway in between. Okay. So then cosecant's the reciprocal of sine. So it's a positive sine, so it's going to go middle, top, middle, bottom, middle. And I'm going to do my sine graph dotted. If you don't remember that, it's not super detrimental. Okay. Nope, not that one. Just where it hits the middle. So since our sine graph hits the middles here, those are where our vertical asymptotes are. And then we create from our max points, parabola looking things, and our min points, parabola looking things. And then that's our graph. Now, secant's very similar. Um, so notice this right here is our cosine graph. Um, um, we still have the asymptotes where they're in the middle. Um, if you look at the one period of cosine, it has um, split parts right here of the parabola. I mean, the picture ends up looking the same when you're looking fully left and right, but you'll have like a part of a parabola, a part of a parabola, and then a full parabola. Okay, parabola looking things, I should say. Okay. So we have the same kind of process that we go about. So there, here, there's nothing that I need to pull out with the B value. So um, I just can move right along. Our midline is at negative 1. The amplitude is an unsaid 1 out in front. So up 1 and down 1. And then the period is 2 pi divided by b, which is 2 pi halves, which gives us pi. So our start point, this, remember, is really x plus 0. So we're starting at 0 in this case. And we're ending at um, our start point, which is 0, plus the period, which is pi. So we're ending at pi. So start at 0, end at pi. Then I'm taking this distance here, cutting in half, then cutting that amount in half, the first amount in half, and the second half in half. So this part in half, and then this part in half. It's a secant, which the reciprocal is a cosine. It's a positive cosine, so we're starting at the top, middle, bottom, middle, top. Again, I'm going to do dotted. It was a relatively horrible dotted one. The asymptotes are at the middle, so here and right here. So we've got our actual graph. You take the max, make a part of a parabola looking thing, take the max, take a part of a parabola, min, parabola looking thing. Okay. Again, it's not an actual parabola because it's bounded by the asymptotes. Okay. So let's try this one. Okay. So I do have something that I need to factor out here. So we're going to do negative secant of 1 fourth x. If I take pi fourths and I divide by 1 fourth, we're going to flip and multiply. So the fours cancel, so we get pi. Now, you can always check to make sure you factor it out correctly. If I distribute this through, do you end up at the same spot? So 1 fourth x, which is this. And then 1 fourth times pi, which is pi fourth. So yes, I did factor it out correctly. It's a nice quick check that you can verify that you didn't mess anything up. So our midline is at negative 1. 
the amplitude is an unsaid one, so we're up and down one. Remember your amplitude you never refer to as negative. Um, we're shifting left by pi. So we start at negative pi, and then the period is 2 pi divided by b, which in this case is 1 fourth. I did not leave a good amount of space to show you times by 4 over 1, which will get us to 8 pi. So our period is 8 pi. So notice this only goes up to 2 pi. So then that's problematic because I'm going all the way to 8 pi. Oh, we didn't find our endpoint. Um, so our end is the start, which is negative pi, plus the period, which is 8 pi, which gets us to 7 pi. So I'm starting somewhere over here and ending at 8 pi, right? So I need to rescale. So I'm going to do just every one tick mark as a pi. Good morning, teachers. Midvale Mining has breakfast set up in the library. So if you are here, make your way over to the library for Midvale Mining. Okay. So then we are starting, since it's secant, that's cosine. Cosine starts at the top, so we do top, middle, bottom, middle, top. Asymptotes are where the cosine graph hits the middle. And then we've got start at the max, create a parabola-like looking thing max parabola like looking thing it's just half of it because we're i didn't graph this portion over here this portion over here it'll end up having this part over here right if we continue to graph on and then we've got this part right here from the min upside down parabola and that's how you graph your secant and cosecant